where the hell are we going? That's an important question and one that uh, a submarine is going to find really critical to mission. Um, and of course you have a navigator and a quartermaster and uh, they're uh, big players in helping find out just where you're going. But of course you want to have a compass. Now uh, on a separate topic we'll talk about the, uh, the gyro compass and this is a gyro compass repeater on the face of it literally is a course clock. Again that's another uh, uh, topic for another day. But we're primarily relying on that gyro compass for uh, heading. But that's a very uh, persnickety, delicate instrument, a gyro compass. And uh, they often went down, failed, broke, uh, had to be recalibrated. And uh, if that happened, you relied on the tertiary magnetic compass. Now, up here in the main steering station, the main helm, uh, we have our magnetic compass, and this is a model 1835 uh, from the Bendix Pioneer Eclipse Company. Um, it's mounted right here, and uh, it is a, basically, it's a, a modified Sherman tank compass. You know, in the uh, North African desert, armored operations involved basically driving through oceans of sand where you may not have uh, landmarks and other navigation aids. So uh, having a compass was a, a, a valuable tool to uh, not get lost. If you've ever seen the great 1944 movie uh, with Humphrey Bogart, Sahara, check it out. There was a remake, but check out the original one. Um, so this was in essence uh, a modified Sherman tank compass and the Sherman tank compasses were the model 1829 so I'm going to erase the two compensator balls on the side with my hands and this center section is the model 1829. Now of course surrounded by the steel of a Sherman tank, the armor, that's going to have a, a dilatorious impact on the ability of the um, compass to uh, find magnetic north. So inside the body of the compass, there are uh, two sets of compensator uh, magnets that you would use to trim the compass to erase the effect of the hull of the tank, or in the case of a submarine, the hull of the submarine. So down here in this cylindrical uh, uh, skirt, if you will, is a spiral uh, not a spiral rather, but a starburst like prongs uh, sticking out uh, from a center hub and on each spike or spoke of this wheel, that's a good analogy, it's the spokes of a wheel, are little ring magnets that you would move in and out to compensate for various uh, 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 effects of the hull. Uh, that was the gross compensators and up here under this cap and I will open this up are the fine compensators. I'm going to pull that off. Okay, uh, Evan, get in here tight. Now they're marked in red and white. These little red and white pins are very fine yet powerful magnets that provide the uh, very delicate fine trimming uh, of the magnetic compass. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this cap back on. This is like opening up the cranium of a baby. You never want to do that uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. Or in our case, we want to do that for our, our viewers because we like our viewers. We'll do anything, including coming up to the Connie Tower on the hottest day of the month and sweating our, our brains out to show you this. Um, by the way, did I mention I'm Paul Ferrace, USS Cod? But I think by now you would know that. And behind the camera is Evan, um, who is schwitzing rather badly. But anyway, um, now this is a rather unique, this isn't the model 1829 sands the big balls, or in this case, medium balls. There is a much larger balled compensator ball version. That's what fleet submarines ended up using during the war. That's the model 1835. Now this one, thank God for eBay, has the smaller balls. 
Uh, and I'm not sure why, but perhaps up here they needed a slightly less uh, trimming, very gross trimming. Uh, but I have seen m both the upper, and we're going to go down to the control room in a minute, uh, to the auxiliary steering station where we have the correct Model 1835 with uh, compensator balls that are roughly the size of a tennis ball. Uh, we have two of those. Again, thank God for eBay. Um, and I would have put that one up here, but we can't get our gyro compass repeater to swing away. Um, we're going to have to probably take some heat to that. So in our uh, efforts to get a compass up here, uh, we did have in our collection the smaller ball and that fit. So for the time being, the small ball's up here because we can't get this to swing away. And by the way, I want you to come back in here. I have a real big thank you to Rich Pakelny of uh, the Pampanito, they manufactured uh, the bracket and uh, the, uh, the mounting bracket and the uh, holder bracket, this gray thing here. And uh, um, down below they made both the, the mounting bracket and the, uh, the, uh, the larger inner bracket out of, of course, brass because it can't be magnetic. Um, they did them for their compass when they acquired them, and they made extras for us. So thank you very much, Rich McCallany of the Pampanito. Um, but anyway, so that's a, a great example of, uh, of subs helping each other. But let's go down uh, to the control room, and we're going to look at uh, the absolute correct Model 1835 compass with the big balls. Here we are back in the gloriously cooler control room with the auxiliary helm. You hear that, Chuck, uh, the bowfin? The auxiliary helm is down here where main steering is up in the conning tower where the captain is. Uh, but I can understand how uh, a modern nuke sub skipper would just assume that you want to have your, your uh, um, longitudinal axis control uh, literally w within arm's reach of your uh, whatever, horizontal. Um, but anyway, World War II. Um, here's our auxiliary helm. Here yeah, under the table is the main uh, arm of gyro compass. Uh, the window is only used when you're calibrating and checking on it. Nobody's looking down through there. You're looking up here at the compass repeaters that are throughout the boat. Uh, but again, it's a very delicate system. In fact, over here we have a power uh, supply uh, warning device. It's a system that alerts the crew the gyro ain't getting enough of the right kind of power so it's not going to be accurate. So you do want to know about that in a hurry. Uh, on a, under a separate power supply is the auxiliary gyro. So here's the auxiliary. The, our auxiliary gyro in World War II starts out as an ARMA but uh, in our refit um, uh, for 1951 we get the Sperry uh, backup gyro compass and this will drive the repeaters as well but again under a severe depth charging good lord they may both go down then we're going to have to use our again I love saying it tertiary magnetic compass and here in all of its glory is the model 1835 Bendix compass um, really only found aboard fleet subs and if you happen to have a copy of the fleet submarine manual from uh, 1946, 1951 uh, editions, or they, they would update them. Uh, you will see pictures of the large balls. Uh, I know the blueprints mention the model 1829, and I think that's where Rich kind of got sidetracked. Uh, the blueprints say one thing, but the photos say quite another. In fact, here's our proof positive. This is a great picture of our chief of the watch uh, at the Christmas tree and if you look up over here in the corner you'll see our uh, magnetic compass with the big balls. There's well only one of the big balls because they cut it right out of the frame so uh, we'll, Evan will do a beautiful insert on that. So we know we had the model 1835 and, and, and here it is. Now uh, again, with one of those wonderful Rich Pakelny USS Pampanito uh, 
water uh, uh, jet cut uh, brass brackets, uh, which frankly uh, were absolutely critical. Now we had the main mounting bracket uh, mounted there and nobody knew what the hell that was until we started really looking into it uh, years ago and we realized, okay, that's for a magnetic compass. But these things were not to be found anywhere on eBay, I mean, for years. In fact, since eBay began, we were looking, and, and you never found these things. Uh, if you did find them, you found maybe the bracket, uh, the, the mounting, and, and, or maybe the, the framework, but everything was missing. And certainly not the Model 1835 until one day, 2 a.m., I found this bad boy on eBay. And boy, I bought that in a big hurry. I do not want to try to open this spring-fed um, uh, cover, again, brass, uh, on the larger compensating ones. Uh, maybe we'll do an insert, uh, but suffice to say, think of spokes on a wheel, uh, you know, uh, horizontal, with each spoke having magnets that you can move in or out at different, uh, different distances from the center hub. Um, now, the junior officer uh, had to trim this thing, and it was a manual. And this is told to me by uh, uh, our last skipper, uh, uh, who uh, said that as a young uh, uh, ensign on the boat or, or, or lieutenant commander, uh, not lieutenant commander, or lieutenant JG, uh, it was his job on, I believe, Catfish to maintain uh, the trim uh, uh, record log for this and when uh, division commanders would show up if they were not happy uh, with you uh, they would demand uh, to see the uh, the trim log and if it wasn't up to date you were in trouble now how do you uh, trim and, and check this well the boat has to be out in the ocean and it has to be able to maneuver you go straight ahead for a number of miles uh, and check then you make a 90 degree turn and it has to swing correct 90 degrees and that's how you checked it and if if it wasn't perfect then of course you had to uh, uh, to readjust these magnets and the uh, the large compensator balls um, now in the guppy era these things I believe go away and are uh, replaced by uh, electronic uh, and uh, uh, an interim uh, magnetic-based uh, compass uh, that I know nothing about. Uh, but World War II gyro compass and the tertiary magnetic compass from our friends at Pioneer Eclipse, also known as Bendix. They were making compasses for aircraft, uh, uh, all kinds of ships, uh, small craft uh, especially. Uh, but here we are in, in, in our uh, control room with this beautiful Model 1835 magnetic compass with the big balls that you don't really want to have to rely on because as I was told by Captain Adelman, our, our last skipper, it indicates north with about that level of accuracy. Uh, it's better than nothing, but only slightly better than nothing. Uh, but there it is, a little bit of history and how you find your way across vast tracts of ocean. So remember, hit the like, subscribe, the notification bell, and come on back. We'll have more content for you soon. Thanks for coming aboard.